So King Charles and Camilla are headed to France to mark the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings during World War II. While the King and the Queen are going to be joining the Ministry of Defence and Royal British Legion's commemorative event at the British Normandy Memorial at Ver-sur-Mer, William will mark the anniversary alongside the Canadian government at Juno Beach Centre, where he will be joined by Canadian Armed Force personnel and World War II veterans. Meanwhile, as Richard Eden indicates in this article, Rose Hanbury's profile within the royal family is rising higher and higher. Look at the title of the article. How Rose Henry, the Marchioness of Chomley, is blossoming in the court of Queen Camilla. This is all the more noticeable due to the absence of cancer stricken Kate. I didn't say so. I'm not the one who describes Kate as cancer stricken. It is the media that describe her as cancer stricken all the time. It's interesting that as she is missing and despite all the rumours of a possible affair between Rose Chumley and William, she is being brought so close within the family. The funny thing is that the Royal Rota love to pretend and every now and then innocently mention Rose Hanbury and then get mad when others mention her as well. <laughs> like the way they blamed Stephen Colbert for all of this when it all started from them in the first place. Something that crosses my mind all the time when random sensitive stories are being brought out by the media is, is this a warning from the media to the royal family? Guys, before we continue, if this is your first time on this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment or two in the comment section. If you don't know what to say, just leave a heart emoji or some other emoji that reflects your mood. That counts as well and it goes a long way to help my channel. If you have visited before and you have not yet subscribed, let today be the day you decide to subscribe. For all of you who have been rocking with me from the beginning, thank you. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section and also hit the like button, okay? Thank you. Anyway. Just because people were beginning to revisit the question, I mean, we're seeing so much of Rose Chumley. So naturally, people are going to ask about Kate. Where is Kate? Right? And because people have begun to remember that actually we were on a Where is Kate campaign, and the answer that to that question has still not been provided, the royal family drops this announcement about the so-called project that Kate has been working on behind the scenes. Do you guys believe that? I, let me know in the comment section. Well, th this project that they're hyping up so much is a trailer for a short film addressing the mental health hurdles faced by British farmers. It is indeed a worthy project, but Kate herself is not featured in the film. So how do we know that she had anything to do with it? We don't, and we can't question it. We must swallow this cock and bull story like the plebs that we are. It's quite clear that the royal family is only pandering to their inner circle, certainly not the whole of the UK, just the royalists and the monarchists. I am quite certain that some of you will leave comments in the comment section indicating that you don't care about the information about the royal family or Kate or William, and you don't want to hear anything about them. However, I have told you before and I'll tell you again, on this channel, we pay attention to what the royal family is doing, not because we are fangirling them, but because we need to know what our enemies are doing. We don't believe in burying our head in the sand on this channel. As I have told you, one of the things that we believe in on this channel is pushing back against the narrative. This is how the Sussexes have found themselves in this situation. They find themselves in today where they are able to move forward and do things according to how they have planned to fulfill in their destiny. So please, I don't even want to hear it. When I see your comment, it will be deleted. As far as I'm concerned, the battle remains ongoing. This means that on this channel, we will continue our stated approach until we see that the media narrative against Harry and Meghan has changed. 
it's either that or Harry and Meghan have elevated so far upwards and forwards that nothing the media does will touch them or anything related to them. Then I will stop looking at what the royal family are doing. We are not there yet. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. <laughs> anyway, back to discussing Kate and her disappearance. The rumors regarding Kate's absence are getting louder and louder, given that we have begun to see more and more of Rose Chumley, as I have stated previously. And at this point in time, it just looks like the Royal Rota may not be able to help themselves very soon. It seems like any day now, they're going to blurt out the truth. Question is, how does all of this affect Harry and Meghan? Hmm, good question. Let's analyze it. So on one hand is going to be seen as a huge reputational damage for the future king and queen right what are we talking about it is the situation about the truth of kate's illness the truth of william's relationship with rose chumley and the truth of his relationship with kate and possibly the truth around the passing of Thomas Kingston. I believe that this has greatly impacted Prince William's ability to be useful to the British royal family and he's on a very short leash with the king right now. Can you see that they're carrying him along with them to France as though to supervise him to make sure that he doesn't get into any trouble. Anyway, this is the reason I think why we are seeing some quarters of the media crying for the return of Harry and Meghan. They can see how well they execute all their responsibilities. But this is also precisely the reason why we will see Harry and Meghan star rising and sliding out of their reach. This is despite King Charles sending out subliminal messages indicating that he will not tolerate anyone speculating about when Kate is going to be returning to public duty which is fine, I suppose, but it's also odd because while it is clear that William is being shielded from public speculation about the whereabouts of Kate, William is clearly being supervised to prevent him from continuing to make embarrassing public blunders. Rose Hanbury, who was not a member of William or Kate's official team, is being spotlighted at high-profile royal events, indicating that the rumor regarding a potential relationship between William and Rose is true. It is as clear as day that the royal family are working to a hidden agenda, and only time will tell whether we ever become privy to the secrets surrounding Kate's disappearance. But then it makes one wonder, why? Because let's not forget that the Middletons are also currently drowning in debt, and for all Charles's talk about him wanting to shield Kate, he has not managed to shield Kate's family from the embarrassment of bankruptcy. And so it's quite clear that something just doesn't add up. Anyway, their problem is not our problem. Our focus is Harry and Meghan. And because the royal family and William are not doing so well, the media are beginning to beg for a piece of Harry and Meghan's pie. They are now saying that they want King Charles to bring Harry and Meghan back as an anniversary gift. Even if such a discussion was going to be had, and I'm well aware that that ship has sailed, so you don't need to send me any messages. I'm well aware, and I'm not suggesting that Harry and Meghan come back, okay? Don't send me any messages about that. I am well aware. Let me repeat it for the people at the back, for those people who get so triggered when these kind of conversations come up. I am well aware that the ship has sailed. You don't need to send me any messages about it. What I am saying is, and I believe that we can have full conversations as adults, even if such a conversation was going to be had, the royal family could not now pay Harry and Meghan's price for coming back. They just would not be able to afford Harry and Meghan because Harry and Meghan would be bringing with them new skills that they didn't even have before they stepped back from the royal family, a way of living that the royal family has clearly said that they would not be willing to fund. So what's there to consider? 
I think what if I were to advise the royal family, what I would say is that they need to find a way to to coordinate with Harry and Meghan. Because if they fail to do so and continue on the war path that they're on, they are the ones who are going to be on the losing end. Because Harry and Meghan are only going to get bigger from here on out. Not only that, Harry and Meghan's escape could motivate other members of the royal family to escape as well. And then who would be left to carry out the work of the royal family? The royal family is going to crash. Because is a family business still a family business if all the family members have run away? (laughs) Anyway, guys, there you have it. Prince Harry and Meghan's Nigerian visit has the girls crying into their teacups. What is for sure is that the rejected stone has now become the cornerstone. Let's wait to see how this game of chess and checkers plays out. That's all I have for this video. Until the next one, this is Wheezy signing out. Bye.